Wow. Hey. Hey, y'all. Yeah. It's dollars, man. I I was gonna ask you because I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to, I was gonna say Zalls. I I probably would have messed it all up. So I was gonna ask you first. Okay. okay. What's up, Zalas? How you doing, she, girl? Your impact. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. This? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. And what's going all on? Right. It's your boy DJ Dive in. And we got another co-host on the phone. Same man. Hey, man. I'm here, I'm here. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? What's that? What's that, man? Was it you that was talking? I was listening to y'all, man. Like, <laughs> who was talking? Like, I, I kind of missed that part that, when you was kind of wilding out on, on, on people and stuff. Was that you doing that? Yeah, that was me. I wasn't wilding out on nobody. I was just letting niggas know. Stop making uncle references out here, man. Some people can't take, can't take being made fun of and talk shit to, so... They go with, they go marry white women, and when something happens to us in our own community, they don't show no love because niggas done made fun of them their whole life. You feel me? Stop making uncle workers out here. Who wants you come to the phone? All right, all right. Welcome to the takeover. <laughs> Anything goes. <laughs> I, I feel you, man. All right, now pronounce that name one, one more, one more time. So basically, you know, so imagine Gonzalez just take out the gun, you know, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. All right, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. I'm more happy. Okay, Gonzalez, <laughs> I like that. You put a play on Gonzalez, I like that. All right, yeah, that, that's the last name. You make that's that's your last name. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I like how you play it on that, man. I like that. I like that. That's dope. All right. Well, so what what can we expect from Gonzalez? Can we? I, I, I carry a pistol now. I keep my pistol on holiday pool one time. But... Yeah, I said. Well, that's self defense, right? That's different. My gum is slow. My gum is slow. What's the pistol? You, just, you ain't say pull. Pull. That's, okay, that's a big hey, gun. That we, that's, what, that's what I do the records at. That ain't really hot like that. I go ahead on and pull on them. You know, them like heat. Go ahead on and just, you know, shoot the record. But yeah, it's only for self defense. We keep, we keep the pistol for self defense and, and bad records. <laughs> Word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, I mean, you, you so should. What can, I, I, you see, me now, like I, I, I grew up in Jamaica, also, right? So a gunshot okay. is actually is actually a salute to a record, not a mm. not a diss. It's the opposite. Mm, good point. Yeah, yeah but see, there's a big difference. This is take the take side, man. <laughs> <laughs> we lick a shot. We lick a shot in Jamaica. I got I got I got rude boy on the yard for yard boys, you know. But no, not no. Here we no, we not we not we not shooting at you to compliment you. <laughs> not just Rick and Tom. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that with you. You, you are honored guest. You in our house, man. We here to show you love, man. Show love to underground artists, man. So tell us about where you from. You originally from Jamaica, or you just you know you moved out there for a little bit, or that's where you from? Canada. Yeah, my parents. My parents are Jamaican, and they you know they they was um they was traveling a lot. So you know me and my siblings were kind of born in different places. So. Me, I was me and my younger brother that still lives in Brooklyn was born in Toronto. Then I left the party, I don't know, four years old. First time I knew myself, I was in Jamaica. So, you know, that, that was a that to me that was the most fun part of life. And they told me that, but I didn't know at the time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, even though I didn't come back up for like two years, I went back and went to high school and everything down there. And then from there it was Brooklyn and then, you know, as an adult back in Toronto just because I'm a citizen and I can do it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, me. Okay. All right. So, how long you been doing music? Well, I put out my first EP in 2008. Okay. Yeah, what, 2008. What made but you I've get been, into I've it? been doing music since I'm a kid because my grandma, she's Cuban, and you know they ran from Castro to Jamaica, and she had this organ. And we used to. She taught us how to play all the chords and all that stuff. So, music has always been. You know what I'm saying? Like my life right. in terms of like I, I know music from that from that part all the way up. You so, feel me? So, but but in terms of like putting out a project, that yeah, was 2008. Okay, describe your sound first. What can we expect from you? Well, my sound, my actual sound, sound I would say is just mostly laid back. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, put it like this. Everything in life, I like to use this example, a funeral is going to have music. You know what I'm saying? So 
there's a vibe to everything that's going on in your life. You feel me? So you can put a song to it. Okay. Or, or, or you know, or tone to it or whatever. So that's, that's how I describe my music. You know what I'm saying? It's just, so can we hear any of those, you know, Jamaican, Caribbean, you know, Cuban. Cuban. Well, Caribbeans too. You know, Jake. No, I'll just add a Cuban. Oh, Cuban influences. I was getting there. Oh, yeah, you definitely will. <laughs> you will definitely hear Jamaican influences. You will not, um, not on this EP, you're not going to hear anything, you know, Latino, Cubano, but um, I, I know I've done records before, but I guess they would you got like a, that. You got a lot in you Cuban, Jamaican, Canadian. I know, and don't know what part of Africa I'm from. I know, it's such a little firecracker. <laughs> it I mean, really is, man. I mean, what did that help you? I'm, and, and I'm speaking to you as far as you and not the music. Did all these different influences or from different nationalities kind of help mold you into the, the person you became today? Oh yeah, well definitely, you know. But um, in terms of Cuba, I never, I never, I never been there because from uh, I always thought that if I go there, that I was gonna get captured and tortured <laughs> and stuff like that as a kid. And then <laughs> later on, coming to Canada now, I found out that we're actually allowed to go there, but I still haven't taken the chance to go there, or you know. But I know it's all good, so I'm gonna go. So I, I wouldn't say you, you, you know, you, you was like I didn't experience Cuba in any kind of way. Whatever right. my grandma. Right, you told just, me, you know, that, that was it. But uh, in terms of Jamaica and, and Brooklyn, and and now Toronto, um, yeah, I definitely feel like I have a. What was the question? If I have an advantage? No, not advantage. Did did it help mold you into the to the person you became now? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? Because I I I feel like I can see outside of just one, like like the block. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, man. But I, in Brooklyn, I, I knew people that had never been to Manhattan that was born and raised in Brooklyn. Like, some people are just, you, you know what I'm saying? And then when I go to Jamaica, my cousins and I'm in Kingston, which is, I didn't grow up there, but that's where most of my family is at. And um, it's, it's a garrison, right? So it's called 100 Lane. You know, so they wouldn't even go <laughs> downtown. And when I go there, I'm all over the place. Like, nah, nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, living in different places, you you know, you're able to um, see it from a whole different perspective. Gotcha. Than gotcha. the other person would that that you know that didn't live. I, I don't mean traveling and visiting. I'm talking about living in three different places. You feel me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, tell me about this uh this song, uh, what, Loose Woke. Yeah. Um. DJ Diving is that his name? The one that shoot the record. No, nah, that's Sandman that shoot the records. Sandman, is he still, are you still there? Yeah, he probably got his phone muted. Sandman! Yo, I'm there? right here. So I, was, I, just got, I just got y'all on mute because I got a lot going on in the background. But I hear everything. All right, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> that show that you do, that you shoot the record, if the record is good, what do you do? We fry chicken, man. We do y'all for chicken, man. Everybody knows. Okay, so let's do it. Let, let, let's do it with this song whenever you play it. Let's, why not? <laughs> <laughs> we, don't have any more, we don't have any more artists lined up. It's just you. It's just you. Yeah. That wouldn't be fair. That would be, that's, that's, our, that's one of our most popular segments besides our interviews, man. Besides our interviews. Because I knew you'd be frying chicken. That's why I'm so confident. All right, man. No problem. <laughs> they were frying chicken. <laughs> he's saying frying the chicken. Okay. You probably end up jerking the chicken. Do, we can go, if you want to do it, we can go ahead on and do it. Let's go. Let, let me hear something. Let, let, let's go ahead on. We're going to well, do it. We're going to do a let them know form. Was, well, when, nah, whenever DJ, whenever DJ Diamond is ready to play it, we ain't got to do it right now. Diamond, okay. Diamond don't play nothing. He don't push no buttons. I push the buttons here. I'm the bush. <laughs> I am the button pusher. No, I'm just playing. I spin I, records though. Yeah, he spin records. I push the buttons. That's why he's the DJ. I'm just holiday. You know. Word. Nobody, nobody likes me. Nobody DJ laughs at my jokes. It's, it's not, it's not actually DJ Holiday. But if you call him DJ a holiday. He will get mad, so he I'm not a piss DJ. you off. Call him a I'm DJ. I'm a button presser. Yeah. Anyways, go and introduce your song, um, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Yeah, it's your boy Gonzalez, man. I'm right here on a uh, 104.5 FM. DJ Diver, Sandman. Everybody came to my new song, Loose Rope. 
Okay, same man. Mr. Simmons. All right, man. All right, man. Man. <laughs> Fool, what you trying to do? Nigga, you trying to kick Molly? No, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> Good job, man. Good job. Get that man some chicken, man. <laughs> Simmons, I, th- I think... I think although he wanted you to like his song, I think he wanted you to pull on his song because he's so fascinated with it. Oh, he's so fascinated with the pool. Yeah, I think he wanted you to pull on his song at first. (laughs) 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 So you done made his day. I'll tell you what, what, look a shot for for, for Gonzalez, man. Look a shot, man. Pull. There you go, man. There you go, man. Good job, man. I like how you put out, you know, a positive record. We need more stuff like that out here in the street circulate, man. So we need more protest music. I'm into protest music. I do protest music. So I appreciate it. I appreciate the call, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, it's it, for me personally. It's not protest music. It's a poem. It's a poem called "Loose" that I had in my head for a long time. Wow. I don't even know how long. Probably it's a long time. The first two verses is a poem called "Loose." And then I heard a beat that it just dropped on a beat. All this crazy stuff. You know, you in the house, you, you know, quarantine. And, you know, my friend from France sent me a, sent me a bunch of beats. And, I, man, it just dropped right on the beat. So, like, around 2 in the morning, the third verse came to me. I jumped out of bed. I said, no, I got to write this right now. Then I booked the studio. They, they reopened up, I think it was two capacity or three, whatever. And, you know, and did the song. But, yeah, I mean, police brutality and all this injustice. It's been happening for a long time. You know what I mean? Like, we're talking like 400 years. So, yeah. yeah. But the third verse, of course, yeah. The third verse is basically right now, is, you know, the, with COVID and all that. But, um. Who, who's I, on the instrumental? You know, I, appreciate, I, I appreciate the feedback. Who's who's on the instrumental? You mean who produces it? Yeah, who produces it? Same thing. That's Nick, Nicholas from the Import Music Group. Okay. He's over in, um, I, I met him in Brooklyn. His first time in America, he hit me up on the internet that I want to come to come to America. Are you familiar but I ain't with? I got nowhere to go. Have you ever uh, heard of Little Brother or Big Brother? I'm sorry. It's a um. It's little a group. Brother. It's Little Brother. It's little brother, yeah. it's little brother. It's a group. No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't heard from. Them. You should check them out. Um, like when your record first came on, that's what came to mind. They kind of use a lot of that like live band um, instrumental, and they rap over it. That's what put me in the mind of. Isn't it a producer? Uh, isn't that little brother his his group? What's the producer that's from North Carolina? That teaches? Yeah, yeah, little brother. But you talking about the one that produces? Oh, yeah. Um, um. Let me see. I gotta look it Jesus. up. Jesus, I can't think of his name right now. It's a famous producer that that's part of little, little brother. I I thought. Yeah. He he teaches at NYU. He, he is he is a producer. I forget the guy. Ninth right? Wonder. Ninth Wonder. Yeah. Yeah, because it's there Fonte, Big Poo, Ninth Wonder. Yeah. Oh, I definitely heard of him. Yeah, uh, it, that's 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 the type of feeling, and and not to compare you to you know what I mean somebody else, but that's the type of feeling I got when I heard your music. It put me in that type of vibe, and that's such a powerful group, and that's a group, and you were by yourself. So you know what I mean. Hats off to you because that 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 means a lot to me. Um, let me just uh, I don't know if y'all know but the, the poem at the end that's my homie that I know for a long time from uh, Long Beach, California you know what I mean well when he just moved to LA I met him out there he moved from Oklahoma so that's over Diggs that's doing that that poem at the end you know what I mean okay All so right. basically I sent the song to him I'm like I'm gonna put this out man I just recorded it and he's like no you're not you're not putting this out without me I got a poem but I, I need to jump on this now you know what I mean because we were talking about everything that was happening. Like, man, his main concern was like, it's, it's going to die down and everybody's going to just forget about it. And then we're going to go back to worrying about Corona and then we're going to go back to work and it's going to be over. You feel me? Right, right. And I'm like, nah, I'm going to do this song. <laughs> you feel me? And we're not going to forget about it ever. You feel me? Because if you forget and then you forget to tell the next generation, then it can happen again. So, and, and we don't want to, Pass this type of life on to them. True. You feel me? Yeah, Because Rosa Parks got us sitting in the front of the bus, so why should we pass on this to our kids and our grandkids like this? You feel me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what's up with um? What's up with a project? I know, I know. You, August. I seen something in the bio for August twelfth. Did you complete that 
EP? Oh yeah, the EP's out. The EP's okay. out. The, the EP was already in the works before before Loose Woke. Gotcha. Okay. Loose Woke. Loose Woke was squeezed onto it last minute, and I and I actually put it out on Juneteenth on YouTube for free just to put it out there because I'm like, no, we're gonna put it out. Put it on Juneteenth. You know what I mean? So like I said, I didn't even tell you the story. So he put his poem at the end of it. He found the studio. And um, I think it was Inglewood, wherever he had to go to get the studio. And then he sent it back up here, and then I sent it to Atlanta because all the studios were closed because of the pandemic. And I found somebody on the internet and sent beat, you know, beat chill mix out in Atlanta. He mixed it in because he was already working on the on the EP. So the EP is definitely out. Okay, all right. And um, how, how do you feel? How do you feel about it? Z Z A W L E S. So I put a W in there. No. So that you could say za instead of Zales. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, how do you feel? But it's still not how working. Do... People still saying Zales and all that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So what's 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 next for you? Well, after this EP, it's going to be a 14 track. Well, I'm going to perform live because there's nowhere to perform. So I'm going to do a, 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 I'm going to do it next weekend. It's gonna be, you know, I'm, I'm going to perform some songs. With a live band, you feel me? Okay. And right. we're gonna, you know, we, we we're gonna get real good footage with a lot of cameras and put that out there. So that's that's what's next. Next, you feel me? Um, after that is gonna be the um, the, like a straight album, fourteen track album. Okay. If if you want to know what direction I'm gonna go in, is that, is that what you're asking me? Yeah. The, was, on the I, album because I, I was just about to. That was you took the words out my mouth. Yeah. And and, and what can we expect with that? 14 that's a lot of tracks yeah 14 14, 14 tracks um based on what's happening right now i might just go in a direction of you know what like it's gonna be all about just this you know and then probably just slip on maybe one girl song on it and one feel good song but the rest of, i'm feeling like this right now i'm feeling like loose walls right now like i've been waiting for this <laughs> this opportunity to see black people get united like this globally I feel like my whole life and you know what I mean I got you know it's just red, red black and green for me you know what I mean I mean I know some people talk a little different you know I know there's FBA <laughs> you feel me foundational black Americans and there's Jamaican and everybody's you know repping but we black. I'm all about the boat stop basically we all black uh, so, so being that being that you from this land, man, being that you're not from the states, right? You, how long have you been living in the states? I was there like for like 16 years. So most of my life, basically. Okay, yeah. Because okay, but but you but you lived abroad in several different countries, though, right? Yeah, Jamaica, Brooklyn, New York, and now I'm in Toronto, where okay. I was born, by so, the way. So I was born here. I just left at probably four years old. My parents, you know. I don't okay, know when I left. Okay, so my, my question is this. My question is this. Being that, how how has it been like being that you're Jamaican? Like I know a lot of you know Jamaicans and people from other cultures, other places, black people from other places. Um, what do you think? Um, you know, uh, black people here in America need to do uh, as far as opening up to our brothers and sisters from other countries. Because like you know, I, I I deal with everybody. It doesn't you know? I don't care if you're black you know, black, white, whatever, um, good people is good people. But I'm saying, like, what can we do more as, like, people in the streets and everything else? Because it's always, it's a little tension between, you know, people that aren't from the country. They don't know what to expect from black folks over here. You understand what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? Right. Like, you might go into the store and it's just a culture difference. You feel what I'm saying? It's a little culture difference, I think. But what can we do as as far as black folks that are from the states and really haven't experienced too much many other cultures when you guys come and you know uh start integrating yourselves into the neighborhoods and everything what can we do more to be more open and let you guys know that everything you know it's all good like you know we we here to help you know and vice versa well that, like i said with me red black and green i just got my flag you know what i mean like so first of all, we got to see, it's not, it's not just you. You feel me? Like you can't put it on, you can't put it on black Americans like that because I'm sure that you see some type of attitude towards y'all different than how, say, 
somebody from Nigeria would talk to uh, react with a white person versus a black American, like they have like a negative type of vibe. You feel me? Like you gotta, you gotta understand. I did live in Brooklyn. I know, I know what you're talking about. So it's like, it's like boom, like you, you automatically just think that we just reckless. So you know, you came from wherever you came from. You're black, but you, you know, you, you, you're kind of looking down on us because you heard that all the bad things about black Americans. So you can't put it all on yourself because it's just action, reaction. So if you see, like you said, people is people, but if you notice somebody treating you a little different, like, you feel me? Then you're, yeah, you're not going to, and they move it into like your country. Country. They move, they, they, they move it into your country. They move it into your country where your, your ancestors suffered. At. Now, let's say they suffered in Jamaica because there was slavery there too. That's not the point. This is where you had to go through all kinds of stuff so that they can come here and sit on the front of the bus instead of the back. To make it real simple. I mean, I, I understand all that, but I'm saying like, you know, when, 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 when like I say, it's a, it's a culture class because even when Nigeria or whoever come over and, you know, we try to, you know, do business or do whatever, like Nigeria's got a mean scam game. You feel me? They scam like a motherfucker. <laughs> So I like, thought you knew. We hustle like, nah, because we like, nah, because when I talk, I get all the meat off the bone. Fuck all that politically correct shit. I done been locked in prison with y'all niggas. We been on the block with everybody. Stop all that bullshit. Take all that shit the fuck out. Like, I, we talking with real conversation. So what is it that we need to do to get on that level hill? My wife got hit in the, by her car by some Nigerians. This nigga backed up and drove off. Like, like. Cause they over here scamming, or the tag wasn't right, or something. Oh, you the, 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 the like, insurance. The, what? The, are you talking about the it, insurance it, scam? It, it, oh, it could be whatever. It's just whatever. I'm just talking about in general. Like it need to be more unity. Because even though we have blacks in America, we sit in the hood. Nigerians own the store. The Arabs own the store, and we got to deal with other cultures that's in our neighborhoods. You know, or whatever, still look down on us when, you know, when we had the corner store. The police was getting sent in there, getting busted. But that's, you know, people were getting busted or whatever. Whatever the case may be, why black folks don't own convenience stores in their neighborhood or whatever. I'm just saying when when the neighborhood culture and the foreigner come together, it's like a clash in between the middle. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, like, what? That's, that's my question. What can be done to solve that to ease tensions amongst ourselves? I ain't thinking about no white folks. Ain't nobody thinking about them. We need to bring peace amongst ourselves because we ain't got no peace amongst ourselves. We can't do nothing with these white folks. Nothing. I don't give a damn what. Nobody say we ain't got our shit together. We can't do nothing with these white people. Nothing. These niggas got self bombers and every goddamn thing. Ain't nothing you can do with them. Nothing. They straight. I'm talking about us. Nothing. We just well, can't do nothing with I, the white folks. I, I don't want to sound too simple, but you could just do what you already know how to do best. Southern hospitality. You feel me? Like, um, instead of making somebody feel. Instead of instead of grilling somebody, I don't know if y'all you talk like that down there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, then yeah, then how about well. yeah, yeah? Then how about a smile? You know how about welcome to the neighborhood? You feel me? Like instead of oh, yeah. instead of who the f- you, you feel me? Yeah. Like that that that's all. Yeah, I like, what that's all I can really say. Like when I when I meet when I meet you know somebody that's not from the neighborhood or, or you know I might just be new to the neighborhood too or talk to somebody that's behind the stand. You know we all chop it up with. You know the the Nigerian guy behind the behind the counter or whatever, but it's just like you know I got I had a workmate he was from uh, uh, the Republic of Congo. Talk with him, learn about his culture, learn what's going on. He was telling me about things like yo, sad man, go to the Congo, buy land, it's mineral rich. We got diamonds, gold, everything. It's just far. You know what I'm saying? It's just far. So like you know, it, I, I guess I can see what you're saying is based on the individual, but I'm saying I, I just want to get to get us to that one book. What one step could we take to get towards, you know, that black unity and love worldwide that we want? And I guess you hit it right on the head because you just like be hospitable to strangers. Check out who in your neighborhood, who's who. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Assholes in every cu- it's assholes in every culture. You feel me? I don't care where you're from. Nigeria, Africa. I mean, Nigeria, South Africa, uh, 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 Jamaica, Canada. It's, it's assholes everywhere. So I, I guess. You just got to feel the person out, take it a person at a time. You know, I, I, I yeah, it. but, you know, as long as we all see ourselves as one, it's a mind thing, right? right? If we don't see ourselves right. as one, if, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're, um, you know, North Carolina and somebody else is just straight New York, straight Brooklyn, 
all day, every day, nonstop. That's it. Then this other person is Jamaican, and this other one is just, you know what I'm saying? Then everybody's seen themselves as different. So we, as black people, got to see ourselves as one. That's why I keep saying red, black, and green, because that's one flag that, that you know, Marcus Garvey came with, and, and, and the black Americans accepted it and made a song about it and everything. And Michael, Michael Max and Martin Luther King, I think they dad followed Marcus Garvey, and that's what it was all about. You know what I'm saying? It was about the, the Pan African flag, you know. So that's one thing that I think that I think helps because every, everybody will see themselves as one instead of being from France. And then not, and then you know, everybody's black, but I'm from France, and then I'm from Jamaica, and then I'm from North Carolina, and I'm from New York. You feel me? Okay. I don't know if that makes right. sense. So you know, we got to. I all, mean, I, I understand. Like I said, I, but, but, I'm just dealing with people because look, from look, you could be the nicest. You, you could be the nicest person. And if somebody come in, a foreigner comes in, black person from Barbados, and they know that they're living good over there, and they already come and act and stink. You feel me? And talking to other cultures with respect and dissing you like off the rip. And and you're going to notice it, even if it's you know, subtle. And you're going to be like, man, what the? You know what I mean? I, I try to be nice to this person. They move into my neighborhood. They're from Barbados. And now because they got some money or whatever, whatever, they're acting like that because they, you know what I'm saying? So all of us, is, you can't put it on yourself because there's, there's self, there's self-defense is a must, right? So you say, okay, you know, I'm Nigerian, you, you know, but you're not going to just give them your credit card that quickly. You feel me? Like you're going to play some kind of defense. You know what I mean? So like I, I said, I, man, I, I, or, 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 or you can educate them. You know, you can educate them. If you see them acting some type of way, you can educate them. You feel me? Like, hey, we all, we all, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. I just, I just, I just like to get artists' opinions on things like that, man. You know that, you know, rap and put songs out the way that you're putting out, out your music, man. But like the song, man. Congratulations on your chicken, man. I hope the damn song, you know, does some numbers for you. And shit, shouts out to you, man. Congratulations, man. Go ahead on the plug, plug your uh, plug, 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 man. Plug everything that you're doing, man, so we can go ahead on and get out of here. Oh yeah, uh, the G Flow Symphony out right now. The EP. You know what I mean? Um, Loose Walk is the last song on it. You know, just check it out, man. Just you know what I mean? Just vibe out and stay positive. Okay. All right. Well, I hope yeah. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, I definitely did, man. I mean, the good thing I listened to y'all for like a whole half an hour. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh so so <laughs> so you you listened to the um you you caught some in the home on Homeboy Hotline interview. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, it, I, y'all made my day too. You feel me? Hey, it's a good hey. show, man. Keep doing it. Hey, appreciate it. I mean, we and, look. And, and, show, man. that video, that that, that 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 video idea that, that that y'all was talking about. Yeah, jump on that. See, that's something. See, y'all playing. Actually, it's the same segment that Sandman's talking about when we critique uh uh other people's music, indie artist music. We just had such a big turnout with it, and with everything going visual, I just want to. You know, big it up and you know, make it more interactive. We can bring artists into the studio via Zoom. So you know what I mean? I'm I'm just trying to make it visual. So I'm just trying to move towards the future since everything is visual. We want we want our own little verses up here. You know what I mean? Yep. But look, I appreciate you. Enjoy sitting down talking with you, bro. All right, man. Pleasure. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? So she ran from Cuba, and it was a big, it was a big deal. The name Gonzalez, right? So, so we, you know, my brother before he passed away, we just, we just rocked out with that, with that name. You know what I'm saying? So, he was Zales. DJ Gonzalez. My older brother was an artist. You know, he was Gonzalez. You know what I'm saying? He was more like a rasta. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. And and yeah. So me now as a younger one, I'm, I'm just okay. You know what? Gonzalez. That's it. You know what I mean? Then they both passed away. I stuck with the name. So that's where the name came from. That's what's up. That's a, that's raw, man. That's a good name. And you know, at the end of the day, the story that you're telling behind why you name yourself that is what's really going to sell. A lot of people do a lot of stuff and ain't got no meaning behind what they do and why. I think you're going to sell, bro, already. I ain't even heard the song yet. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. You can't hear him that good. 
Oh, okay. Okay, then. All right, so I got you turned up, Mario. Hit me you hear him now? All right, my bad, Zollis. My yep. bad, homie. We gonna get it right, but man, you calling from T Dot, man? That's where you from? Uh, I was born here and left with somebody else. I was like three years old, and I grew up in Jamaica and then Brooklyn, and then you know, as an adult, I came back up here and I've been up here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm That's... a citizen up here, but I know what you know. I grew up in three different places, so I'm fortunate to. What 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 did you grow up the most? Huh? What did what did you grow up the most? Like what was the longest you was at? The longest I was in Brooklyn. Oh Brooklyn, okay. Yeah, Brooklyn. Where Brooklyn okay, so you was in Brooklyn the longest now. And I know you'd have seen some stuff in Brooklyn, man. What Brooklyn showed you? Like what Brooklyn showed you different from other places that you done did music at? Because I know if you was in Brooklyn, New York. I know you got some rounds from up there because that's all they do is spit balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, you, you got to be ready. <laughs> you got to be ready. <laughs> roll up with their mans and them talking about, oh, you know, right now, right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to be on go. That's, 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 the minute you put a song out there, get the word out, then be ready. If you're in the sky, and <laughs> Uh, oh man, anybody ever tried you before? All the time, man. I guess that's what the word freaking out means. Because it was all for free. Like, anytime, any place. And you got people like smacking that, trying to do it in the street. Oh yeah, smack changed to change the game, man. Smack changed the game, man, for real. But how long you been doing music, fam? Well, I put out my first commercial media in 2008. So, in terms of doing music, in terms of the like industry, yeah, that was in 2008. But in terms of Yeah. With the organ, you know, how to play it. Oh, snap. And C minor and all that, you know what I mean? Making a song. All that. So, so it's in you, fam. Like I say, you, your people's already doing music. But, man, we're going to go ahead and play your song right now. I need, I need you to stay on the line, man. Go ahead and bring us into it, man. Tell them what it's called. We're going to go ahead and play it right now, man. Let's do it. Yeah, it's your boy Zalas, man. You about to get it tomorrow. The new single, Loose, Woke. Right here, you know what I mean? On Crying Neely Radio Show. That's it, y'all. Live on the 4 5. We're finna into it right now. Y'all stay tuned. Let's go. The new, the new RB WGCT. I just love your music. 104.5. What's up, Zala? Yes, sir. Hey, you, you, you deep, ain't you? You're a deep guy, huh? You got that third eye open, right? Absolutely, man. Hey, hey, I just want to say this, man. That's, that song's right on time. How long how long the song been out, man? Talk to me. Talk to me. Oh, thank you, man. Oh yeah. That's, that, that's a call. Is, is this a call right? Um, the 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 phone is still a little bit lower. And you can oh. get a little bit higher, please. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, yep. that's better. All right. Yes, sir. Sorry about that, big homie. We didn't want to, you know. We got the levels right, but I say, man, that song is right on time. How long has that song been out? I put that out. I put it out on June tenth. So. June 10th, I, I, okay. I, you know, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, I put it out on June 10th, and then, then the album on uh, August 12th, or the EP, I should say. Got you, got you, man. That song is right on time. I know, I know uh, the COVID-19 2020 pandemic is what inspired that song, because everything you're talking about is happening now. That's a song, when you get like, when I get probably get like 60 years old, I can go back and play and be like, look, y'all, this is exactly what's going on. Your third eye open, man. I can tell you that much right now. Is, is that true? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, you know, that's what music is supposed to do, right? You know, right. You know reflect reflect the times, right? Exactly. It's our job. When I, when I was sitting there and I was listening to you and you were saying, and when you were saying the poor, no justice, no peace. And and from where you're from, like, like I say, like you say, you just see a whole lot of stuff that's going on, like, if you was to tell the people how you feel about what you said, just those words, no justice, no, no peace, what do those words mean to you? Like the no justice, no peace. Because a lot of people just screaming no justice, no peace, but ain't got nothing behind what they screaming. So I'm just want to know, like, you, you put it in your song, and I and that's what I keep hearing, that no justice, no peace. And I want but, you to tell but, them. So if, if we're talking about the poem at the end, you know, I got I to gotta let you know that that's over there. That's my homie out in Long Beach, California, that, that added added a poem at yeah. the end of the, of the song because was, originally I told him when I sent it to him that this, this is a poem but I got a beat for it so 
you know, it's, it's a poem in my head that, that, that I've been writing just in my head as things were happening. But I got a beat from, you know, I made it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. If you got it in your head, let me hear it right quick. No, I'm saying he's saying that's how it went down. That's how oh, it went okay. down. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. It went down yeah. right from the poem. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he said the poem at the end. Yeah, oh, that, okay. that was dope. That was dope, Zoz. I like that, man. That was dope, yeah. man. So, so, yeah, so no, 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 it's, it's, it's just a fact. It's just the way it's going to be. If it's no justice, there will be no peace. Right. And it's about black and beautiful, black and powerful. There's nothing to fear no more. Not fear in terms of F-A-I-R, but F-E-A-R. Yeah. Right. And like you said, man, black and beautiful, it ain't going to mean that until we black and powerful. Like, that's, bro, you, 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 you taking it back to, like, the real hip-hop, like, the 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 the, the cares one the, the health self destruction we headed for you go to the public enemy you taking it back I, did, was that was your influences growing up uh, yeah absolutely but with this song I wasn't really taking it back anywhere I was just looking around at what's happening right now yeah yeah and, and just putting putting you know putting words to it like you, you feel me like yeah but you you did I, take it back because. This has been going on for a while, but... For a long know, time. Right, but... <laughs> but, but so I didn't, I didn't have to take it back. It's right. like, this is happening right now. Like, what the yeah. hell, man? You know, yeah. so that, that's, that's, that's what this song is, really. It's really... This is what's happening right now, you know? It's right. not uh, something only that we just look back on TV and we remember Michael X and Martin Luther Mar King. It's literally happening right now. But so, tell me this, though. But tell me what artists now. They just started doing it, but, man... I just, I just know, I, I, I like that song, man. I like that. We, we, we got to play that again. I, as soon as we finish the interview, we're going to run that song back again, too, man. But my thing is, man, like you said, you didn't take it back. You right. But I think you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, I, I absolutely get what you're trying to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, when everything, say, if it was last year, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The, the, the economy is booming, the world, everything just appears to be so great. Yeah. And and all the music is coming up, coming out of our cars, and I, I got more money than you, and everything's yeah. great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You put this out, they're going to say you're taking it back. We put it out when it's really when it's happening right now. It's what's happening. But you see, the yeah. funny thing is, if I had put it out last year, it's been happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? It's, it's just been you're happening. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Have you noticed something? Nobody have you wants to talk about it. Have you noticed something every election year, like 2016 was just like this? You think it got something to do with election year? Like you think this stuff is playing? Or you talk to me. What you think, man? Talk to me. Hey, see, that's that's the thing, about <laughs> this, especially this song right here. <laughs> like with this song, like the third verse, it might sound like a conspiracy. I'm getting it, but it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just giving you an angle, and it, it forces you to think for yourself independently because this is the what do they call the information age that we're in right now. So right. there's a war going on with information and, and perception and and um, what they call the narrative. So basically, um, it, it's, it's a battle. And if, if you notice, they are, like, everybody's trying to target kids. Yes. So it, right. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. So, so, so when I see, when I see a 17 year old in Chicago get a cheek knocked out, by the police and get back up there and say, Christopher Columbus did not discover the work. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So whatever y'all trying to teach these kids in school, and they're not trying to hear it. They tired of it. They tired they, us they're not lies, trying to man. Hear it, you know what I'm saying? So, so I'm like, no, nah, I gotta be, you know, it's, I'm, I gotta be a part of this. You know what I'm saying? Because it's our job to educate, you know, anyone that's younger. It doesn't matter who it is. I mean, and basically, it's like a big battle between love and hate. So you got yes. some people teaching their kids hate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. hate, like, hey, 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 you know what I'm saying? We're supposed to be superior to everybody else. And we got to, you know, you know, we, our, our forefathers, they, 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 they don't tell them the truth, but they fought and they, they don't want to use the word, but they did genocide. They did all of that to get this. So what? To us. What? Yes. So, we was here first. Those Native Americans they taught you about, they didn't want light skin. They were just as dark as me and you. You know what I mean? So we don't even know that much, man. So, yeah, I mean, but the point I'm trying to make is, you, you know, you're teaching your kids to hate out the gate or you teach them to love, right? Right. And then th th this is the battle right here, right now that's going on. And you know what's okay. happening? That's happening, though, because, you know, I'm right here in this Charlotte, man. Charlotte protest. There was more white people out there protesting than anything. And one white girl had a sign say, even white people are tired of your racist white people stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like you're teaching your kids to hate, but most of them growing up to love. So that's a problem, too. So a lot of these racist children, 
they taught them to hate, but a lot of them were converting to say, hey, hey, why are you being so mean to these people? These people are people too. Black lives matter, that type of stuff. So you're right, man. It is a war going on, fam. You know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up before I did, because mm -hmm. that's where I was going next. Mm -hmm. So with, 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 with rap music, you're able to talk to their kids. The mm -hmm. main kids that they're teaching hate, they already listening to Little Baby and The Baby and yeah. Justin Bieber and, you know, Drake <laughs> and Migos and, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So we already got their ears, right? So all we got to do is just talk to them and say, look, okay, I know you're eight years old, <laughs> you feel me? But, mm -hmm. Or 10 or whatever. And I, I'm, I'm aware that mm -hmm. where you're from and, and everything is most likely you're learning a lot of negative stuff about us and about not just us, but just other anybody that don't look like you. Right, and they make them more curious. You know what I'm saying? But you don't. But you don't have to go that route. You can rebel <coughs> against your own parents in your own mind, starting now. Because this, this is a mental war, also, right? Right. And when it comes to us black folk, we got to go look in the mirror, and we got to really, really ask ourselves: Do we love ourselves? Like, what? You got to start there. <laughs> you got to make sure you love yourself first. Man, we was talking about that before you got on the air, that's man. First thing first, man. We you was talking about yourself. that, bro. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, you're right, man. As long as you know some yeah. stuff, man. Hey, yeah. what? How can they find you on social media? Right, Twitter at Zalas Z A W L E S. You know, I like to promote the YouTube channel. It's active right now. Same thing, Z A W L E S. Zalas. Of course, I got the Instagram and, and Facebook. Zalas, y'all. You know? Z, capital Z, y'all. A W L E S, y'all. And I'm gonna say capital letters, man. All capital letters when you type it in, y'all. Cause the dude got a mind on him, like he say. You can tell he's a smart guy, man. You can tell that. But uh, what's your music about, man? I, I know it's, it, this song right here is woke, loose woke. I get that. But um, you know um, what else? What else, what kind of you know what else styles? What else stuff you talk about, man? Talk to us. Well, with, with, with this with this EP, it's it's. You know, it, the, the the concept of the whole EP was just basically like me putting the melody to it. So, you know, there, there, you know, there's different types of songs on it. It's not um, in just one, let's say, one category. You know, for this EP. Now, it, depending on where the world is going, my next album is probably just gonna be. I know that's right. You're a <laughs> Yeah. It's gonna be a bit furious. <laughs> you put it like that. I'm with you. Man. And I'm not holding back because that's what. Rap music is supposed to do not hold back, and nobody's holding back in, in in rap. Like when it comes to you know sex or anything else or violence, mm -hmm. so why should I hold back when I'm talking about this type of stuff? I'm not holding back. Right. I got, once, I got nothing to fear. But so, like I like I was saying to me, I call that's bringing it back. You taking it back, bro. I, I don't. I, that's just what I think. Cause like you say, everybody ain't holding back on all the other stuff. But why are we holding back on this? And some exactly. artists are start, starting to do it now. But it seems like you're driven, man. And uh, for you to go in the studio, take your time out, write these words down, uh, whatever you're doing to put it together, I mean, I mean, you you got a purpose, man. And that's real, bro. And and you for you to be in another country, even though you live up here, for you to be in another country and still be on that, cause I'm pretty sure. It, do, do, how, how they treat how they treating black people in Toronto? Do, do, do black people get treated better in Toronto than they do in America? I don't know. You let me know. Uh, what's going on in Toronto? Uh, the, the the racism is real real subtle, so there'll be a lot of sarcasm. You know, okay. So you gotta be that indirect. You have to be a good listener, because if you're not a good listener, you probably getting insulted and don't even know it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you feel me? It's like that down south too, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's real. That's so, real. So it's not as bla it's not as crazy as it is in America, but it's there. But it's like in a different form. I got you. Right. I'm with you. Are they doing any protesting up there for for the stuff that happened down here? Or are they kind of? Oh man! So, but, but when it, when everything with George Floyd just happened, they had to shut down Young Street, <coughs> which is a, a real long street to say it's the longest in North America. Wow! Shut it down, board it up, like just plywood everywhere, man. They was out there like oh there wow for weeks. They shut it down, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Everything was happening at the same time, so you. Probably didn't even notice it, but it was the same. That's what's up, man. I, 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 I do know Canada, like you say, you're Jamaican, whatever. I know Canada, 
and um, you know, in the Caribbean, I know they got a big connection over the years, especially in reggae, man. Like some of the top reggae artists, they always shout out Canada, man. Uh, is it like a little pipeline from 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 the Caribbean to, to to Canada? What's up with that connection, man? Cause you know it's all people like what uh, my, my man named Cardinal Official. People like that ain't he from T T dot too. Oh hell yeah! yeah. So basically, what, what 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 it is the you know for Trinidad is you know the, the culture that that they offer to this city from yeah. way back is the same like you have in Brooklyn, the West End, and they parade up here. You know, Caravana. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so that right there is, you know, and then for the Jamaica, there's a lot of Jamaicans. You know, Jamaicans are everywhere. <laughs> so, everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> everywhere. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's real deep in the in the in, in the culture of Toronto. So you'll see somebody right. uh, like an Indian, like just throwing a Jamaican accent every once in a while. You know, you're gonna see that. You're gonna hear that when you come when you come to Toronto. So it's very That's strong. How. Y'all y'all running it down there. Then. You got you got. You know, everybody else just buying into it like that. I, I always noticed that, man. Um, it's always been a big connection with, with you know, with the Caribbean and, 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 and you know, T Dot, really, you know, connect Canada or whatever. But I, you know, you know, like I said, we natives everywhere, man. But, bro, it's good. It's good to hear you, man. It's, it's good to talk to you, man. I'm glad, I'm glad we linked up with you. Um, what else we need to know about you, man? Talk to us. It's, the floor is yours, man. What else we need to know? Well, I mean, the, the, the EP is point five. Uh, did somebody say something? Nah, that was just a drop. We have to do it every certain amount of minutes. It said one four point five. My yeah, bad. Yeah, Default Symphony out now, man. You yeah. know, check it out. Loose Walk is the is the last track on it because it was out there for free first, and then I put it out for sale on uh, well not for sale for streaming or whatever on July twenty fifth and August twelfth when yeah. it came out. So you know, definitely go check that out. That's what's um, I'm you know I, I'm on a mission, and and I'm you know. The more you share and the, and the more you listen and, and you know, is, is the more you're going to end up going on your own mission. Because you'll, like, a, especially a song like Loose Woke, or if you just follow what I'm doing, right. you'll realize that there's nothing stopping you but you at accomplishing whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> That's so, real. So, That's yeah. real. That's real. Loose Woke. Hey, and I know the way you spell it, you got a capital E. Does that mean anything? In the middle, the E and the W, that you know, the capital E. Does is it, I'm looking too hard or I'm um, tripping or what? Does that mean anything? <laughs> that capital E in the middle of the word? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm really trying to like look, put it like this, right? Yeah. Loose was the name of the poem, so like you, everything like mental, mental <coughs> slavery, mental, whatever hate, what, whatever is going on in your head is what you, right. is what the fight is, right? When right. it comes to you know, loose, right? Right. And the woke, now, I said wake up, but it's, we already poke up, <laughs> what I, is why I didn't call it loose woke wake up. I was going to call it loose and then put a dash and say wake up, but I'm like, no, we, we woke up. <laughs> We're up internationally, the whole world, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and it doesn't even matter what race it is, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you start to become aware of injustices worldwide. And saying, wait a minute, like I'm paying, I'm paying, you know, like I'm the government is not, it's not in charge of me, like <laughs> I'm in charge of the government. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> You're here to serve me. <laughs> I pay taxes to you, and I tell you, hey, we want some police on the street. We want this. We want that. We want that. And then you're supposed to serve us. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. In terms of the cop, you're supposed to serve and protect everybody, no matter what nationality. No matter what color, no matter what sex, no matter what religion, it's supposed to be all the same. That's right. what we're paying for. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if if you're anti Black Lives Matter, Black Liberation Movement, whatever you want to call it, right? right. If, you're, if you're anti that, then what I want to know is what are you for? Because all we're saying is, you know, you're supposed to treat us everybody the same. Mm-hmm. That's all we're saying. Stop killing us. That's what we're saying, basically. Exactly. And and it, what you should be doing is like, you know what? I pay the same taxes too, and I don't like that. So I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna switch and vote for somebody else. I'm gonna vote for whoever I want to vote for, whatever country you're in. I'm not trying to just say America. Right. And but I don't like the way y'all treating those people over here because that's not right. So change that, and we demand you. And you have. They have to change it. So change the laws. Like it's not about. 
getting one person in jail and guilty and this and that, and that person got convicted, and then you go back and do the same thing all over again like you've been doing. Right. So if, if instead of fighting against, instead of being anti what you know justice, why don't you just join the justice movement? You know what I'm saying? Stick right. to your beliefs and whatever else you, you, you're talking about. They'll work that out, parliament or whatever. But like <coughs> it, it, the, the human part of it is what I'm talking about. Like right. you can't tell me you don't see something wrong with what that means to us, black folks. And then and that's when that's why we always got to take it back and talk about slavery and throw that. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and we've been in the same and spot. Say, okay, okay, time, okay, okay. Right. That wasn't us. That wasn't right. Okay, we agree. But right now, but right now, what? You're doing the same thing. Exactly. Ain't nothing changed, bro. And one thing you are saying, hey, I, I, the government doesn't run me, I run the government, and this, that, and the third. A lot of white people think like that. When black people start thinking like that, that's going to be when the change comes. Like, the way you thinking, if a lot of us just start thinking like white people, like, hey, this is my country. Hey, you ain't tell me. I don't care. Like, if we start doing that, that's when stuff will change. But a lot of us, like, if we hear that down here, they'll be like, man, you crazy, bro. Ain't nobody. But keep thinking you run something. Them people gonna lock you up. Them people gonna kill you. You think you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. They gonna think the opposite. So that's real, man. That's real. Well, I'm gonna tell you something right now. This radio show you're doing right now. Yeah. Back in the day, you couldn't do it. Exactly. <laughs> the car you're driving, you was not able to even get a driver's license. Right. Talking about voting in November, you were not able to do that. Right. People died so that we could do that. Right. So we need to fight so that we could pass on something better to our great great grandkids. We don't want to pass on this to them. Right. You're right, so man. Now that, now that the whole entire system crashed, because some people are saying it's going to crash, I believe it already crashed. Right. The global <laughs> economy crashed. That's what happened. Everybody saw that. So then now it's like a race to get a good position in whatever new system is coming. Right. Not just for themselves, but for the generations to come after them. Everybody's racing for a better position. And all we're asking for is, you know, real simple, man. You out here, you know, I send my son to the store to get Skittles, he's dead. Nothing comes out of it. Right. Um, uh, you know, uh, essential workers in a bed sleeping, and, and you shoot her and kill her, nothing comes out of that. You, you kneel on somebody's neck for eight minutes of poison, you know, nothing comes out of it. Nah, we, I'm not passing this on. That's going to be my son or grandson in the future. Right. So I got to fight. That's real. Man, you, 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 a, you a thinker, man. I give you that. You, you looking forehead, you can look back, you... You very conscious, man. I give you that, man. And it, it, it's a breath of fresh air, man. That's that's real, man. Cause everything you saying, I can feel it, bro. It ain't it ain't just you ain't just talking, man. It, you you making sense. So that's what's up, bro. Hey, we we got we got hey we got to go to the next song. But I'm finna play your song again, man. I, I thank you for calling in, big fam. I appreciate you, man. Oh, thanks for having me, man. You already know, y'all. It's all is y'all. We got a song called Loose Wolf. Can we play the song one more time, man? I'm talking to you, Zoff. Oh, me? Yeah. You, of course you can. You no, should. Yeah. You should. Bring, bring him into it again, man. Bring him into it again. Let's go. Yeah, what up, man? It's your boy Zollis, man. And you know I got that Zest on with it, lay it easy sound, live here on Cran Neely Radio Show. And hey, y'all. It's my new song, Loose Woke. Loose Woke, y'all. Hey, man, y'all go follow him right now, Zollis, y'all. Capital Z-A-W-L-E-S. Yo, coming back to y'all live, like we said we was going to do March 31st, Nip Day, rest in peace. We're going to make sure the marathon continues. We got a young man coming through, um, Daniel Patterson. He filled out the paperwork. He did what he was supposed to do. And now he's about to get this laptop. We're about to pass this baton. You get to meet him just a little later. I just pulled up. I'm in the car. I'm over here, humbled, just chilling you know soaking it all in listening to nip you know what i'm saying there's the computer i'd like to give a shout out to everybody who donated check it out new life go mob i'm a movement not a monument we all in the billion building dig life y'all dreams and a goal it's a life we passing the baton so the marathon can continue y'all should stay tuned swipe so you can meet this kid.
So yeah, hello, my name is Daniel Patterson. I won this laptop in the giveaway and I really appreciate this laptop. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Monument and Dreamton to go for helping me with this. They're the ones that supplied me with the laptop and the application. The application was very easy. It was, a, it was just like an easy like laptop. Like If you don't have a laptop and you need this, it's very, I recommend you do it. It's very, it helps you a lot. And we do this every month. You see that it's crunk. We out here and the police out here, so we about to leave. They, 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 they own our heads. Shout out to mom for raising such a good kid. I don't know if y'all can see her. I hope y'all can see her. That's dope, lovely psychology. He finna put in work. He finna work on our minds. He finna do it all. Thank you, my brother, for filling out the stuff. Let's get it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yay. Check this out. Dreams and the goals. We live to give. I'm a movement, not a monument. Or I'm gonna be a movement until they make a monument. We here. We gonna give out this laptop to this young man for April. I read his essay. We're gonna talk about it real quick. But his essay was amazing. Cause I, I am very interested on how you got interested in being a neurosurgeon. Neuro. Talk to me, here you go. Here's your laptop, Thank first you. off. And how did you, you know, come up with becoming a neurosurgeon? So my mom was already a nurse, so I was already learning a lot about doctoring and nursing. And I've always liked learning about the human body. So I thought the best way to start that would be learning about the brain and seeing how it works and affects the human body. Okay, so now I see what 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 um really intrigued me was how did you get from neurosurgery to like you want to do drop shipping you also do coding and anime like so about a year ago uh me and my uncle started to invest in stocks and i also wanted to learn other ways of making money so i found out drop shipping and all these other kinds of ways so, of making money so yeah and and I, i'm a trader so, and I love crypto. And so you're gonna do like NFTs when you're talking about anime? You're gonna, you're gonna create something like that? Cause I need you in my life if that's what you're gonna do. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I wanna give you this laptop cause it seems like you're gonna make a great impact on this society. And that's what I want. So man, thank you. Thank you to your dad, Scoob, Scooby. And Jim, thank you to your third grade your teacher. Third grade teacher. Because that's also a real thing. Like, uh, it is it's a real thing that in fourth grade, they they tend to uh, mess up our black youth. So you being a strong third grade teacher gives them a great foundation to push push past what they've been doing to us for years systematically. I was the so, first teacher in California. Man, we here. And we're going to follow you, bro. This is not it. Like, and whatever you need, just hit us up, man. I'm, I'm always here. This this is the extension. This is my baton to you. Like, I'm, I'm going to be here. The marathon continues with you. I'm just passing the baton. You dig what I'm saying? So, hey, we always here. Dreams and the goals, we're going to make sure that you become one of them. Lawyer, baseball player, I don't care. We're here for it, though. Please. You dig? So if you need a baseball glove, whatever you need, let us know. We're going to rock you. We're going to rock out with you until, you know what I'm saying? Until you giving back to us. <laughs> with For your real. millions. <laughs> Please. I, I'm some of your millions. Please. You know what I'm saying? Anything you want to say to people, anybody you want to give a shout out to, family, whatever, we got you to this point. Shout out to my mom for you know, raising me this whole time and giving me just life. Oh, and my dad. Oh. Oh, we, we never, dads never get respect. Oh, like after, we're like the afterthoughts. He oh. met me because of the dad. They walking by. We don't get no respect. We don't get no respect. But I bet you she loved dad to death because, you know, daddy's no girl. <laughs> One love, y'all. Thank y'all. We'll see y'all next month, May. Thank you, brother. You yes, raised sir. a great young man. Appreciate it. Let's get it.